welcome to CQFA. This presentation is part of our regular updates on the Canadian Aviation Regulatory Framework. We will review the changes Transport Canada proposes to the UAV industry and to be implemented in early 2018. First, let's define a few terms. The word drone is used extensively in the media and within the population but at the legal level, model aircraft is how the legislator refers to a remotely piloted aircraft of 35 kilos or less for the sole purpose of recreation, for fun. UAV is reserved for remotely piloted aircraft of 25 kilos or less for any purpose other than pure recreation. Unfortunately, the distinction between the two isn't always clear, even when reading Transport Canada's own public relation publications. The proposed regulation may close the gap between all the different terms, but for now, let's just say that drone is a common term for all remotely piloted aircraft in Canada. The different legal nature of UAVs and model aircraft is based on what you do with your device, not the device itself. Today, Canadian aviation regulations apply mostly to UAVs, prescribing rules and conditions professional pilots study and must comply with. Model aircraft pilots must learn to never interfere with other aircraft in the air or on the ground and never fly their device inside or above clouds. In 2015, Transport Canada initiated a regulatory amendment process to clarify a number of internal instructions in response to the growing UAV industry. We now have a set of proposed rules that should be implemented during winter of 2018. They are essentially based on risk management, and for UAVs, risk is a function of weight and the proximity of human beings or sensitive equipment. Here are the proposed regulation requirements. First, a new class of devices will be completely deregulated, comprised of racer-type drones of 250 grams or less. A second class will cater for drones between 250 grams and 1 kilo. The minister will then describe two categories of drones between 1 and 25 kilos, according to the risks their operations will represent. The limited risk category refers to operations away from urban or industrial areas, public gatherings, and certainly away from airports. The complex risk categories will involve professional pilots in urban, busy setups and airport zones. It will require competency and knowledge demonstration and logistics. Finally, the minister will confirm with dedicated language in the Canadian Aviation Regulations, the special status of Structured Model Aircraft Association and club members across the country who will continue to enjoy flying their model aircraft up to 35 kilos in weight, provided the organization's safety guidelines and best practices are followed to the letter. Drone ownership will have to be traceable from either the identification on the device itself or formal registration at Transport Canada and markings on the device. Note that the 250 grams or less are exempted from this rule. For complex high-risk environment, the pilots will have to use UAVs built and maintained under specified standards. The other pilots will be able to use regular products found in the consumer market. The proposed rules mention a minimum age of 14 for devices between 250 grams and 1 kilo and 16 years of age to operate a device of 1 kilo and more. Note that there's no mention of minimum age for the unregulated featherweight category. It also appears that the minister may allow the recognized associations and clubs to impose their own age restrictions. A federal pilot permit is expected in 2018, which will be issued upon successful completion of a written exam based on aviation knowledge. It will be mandatory for complex operations of UAVs between 1 and 25 kilos. It will be accompanied by a Category 4 self-declaration medical certificate comparable to what is asked from ultralight and glider pilots in Canada. 
as well as an international civil aviation organization English or French language competency test performed by a Transport Canada approved language examiner. Across the board, the minister will impose some level of respect for privacy as well as other laws such as the Trespass, Laser Pointing and Dangerous Goods Acts where applicable. We will see what language the Minister of Transport will use to that effect. As for the conditions of flight, the Minister will order that all drone flying be performed under daylight except for the permit holders for whom a Special Flight Operations Certificate SFOC for night operations was issued. Night flying as well as tethered UAVs higher than 50 feet will be lit as per the Canadian Aviation Regulation. The broader question of flying a drone close to airports is getting addressed with increasing clarity. As the lighter than 250 grams will be completely deregulated, the minister will rely on their pilot's judgment to avoid conflicts with the airborne traffic. Professional permit holders with SFOCs and recognized club members will be allowed to get closer to airports than the prescribed five nautical miles using good risk management processes. Built-up areas will be open to featherweight devices and there will be some limits to how the 250 grams to 1 kilogram devices will be operated over built-up areas without permission. Since the complex high-risk operations are likely to require SFOCs, operating within built-up areas will remain possible. The same goes for overflying people, such as gatherings, which will be restricted to featherweight deregulated drones and professional complex operators with written permission from the minister via an SFOC. All categories except the featherweight deregulated drones will have to be properly insured for liability. And last, the minister will plan some provisions for a possible UAV operator certificate, not unlike those of the actual air carriers. For a complete overview of the UAV situation in Canada, take a look at this affordable online course called the Regulatory Framework of Small UAV in Canada. The three-hour course is done in the comfort of your living room, and covers a wide array of topics at the heart of safe UAV flying. It will teach you where to find the applicable rules and how to read them, as well as navigation chart reading, online flight planning resources, UAV insurance matters, and lots more. It's a great package made by career instructors and very much appreciated by those who took it with or without prior UAV experience. Well, that's all for now. Happy flying and talk to you soon.